Hello and welcome to Answers TV. My name is Jet Duxbury and this lovely gentleman is... Alex, via remote link up. And we're going to do a remote high five. <laughs> and, uh, the angle may be wrong. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm dressed like a modular Navy SEAL, but recently Moog released a subharmonicon and I'm lucky enough to have you here to show me how to use it. It's going to be a virtual tutorial. Let's get into it. Now, subharmonicons come out. I've seen a lot of buzzword about it, but there was one video on the internet by a guy called Mylar Melodies, right? That guy. That guy kills me with his sultry voice and beautiful hands. I know, exactly. But it's, it blew my mind. And for some reason, you said that you could beam in from Yorkshire. Yes. And we've got a setup here on the table, as you can see, guys. And yep. uh, in some way, you might kind of remotely get me into Mylar Melodies territory headspace i think i can do it it's not that hard he doesn't do anything very clever anyway it's uh yeah it's all for show so basically yeah you've got the holy kind of trinity there you've got a subharmonica on a d fam and a mother 32 um and so in that video all three of those things are linked um which is what we're going to set up so we can make them work but probably it's helpful to talk a little bit about what they are first and foremost because subharmonicon is going to do like sort of melodies and drones it's like it like just it's like a melody mill it just spits out melodies forever and ever and ever and then dfam spits out rhythms and kind of weird techno sort of drum riffs basically it's sort of a drum machine but it's not and then mother's like your traditional sort of classic moog subtractive synth and that's good for bass lines and and in that video, he, he is playing the, um, the little keypad, you know, and you can do that as well. Um, but it's fun to sync them together so you can get a riff on the mother, riffs on the subharmonicon, and then techno fundamentals on, on the DFAM. So let's, let's do that. So, Jack, you've, you have, you know, you've made a wicked video on the subharmonicon where you've been playing it with the keyboard. But what is your, are you familiar with the way it works or should I explain the layout? Carry on, mate. Okay. So basically, on the left, you've got two four-step pitch sequences, and you've got these four polyrhythm knobs that you can see. And those polyrhythm knobs are going to create clocks, and you're going to combine the clocks together using the buttons that are under polyrhythm, and you're going to send them to make the sequences go forward. And because you're going to combine multiple polyrhythms, then the sequences will go forward in a kind of stepped, jumpy way. They won't just smoothly blast ahead. They'll jump and jump and jump. And it will be like you're playing a keyboard and you're playing with the sort of cadence, you know, slow and fast, slow and fast, step by step. And so those two things together, they create the gates, the sort of on and off events, and they'll also create the pitch melodies. And then in the middle, you've got, six oscillators but as you've been sort of messing around with this you probably worked out you've got two sort of main oscillators and those can be freely tuned if you turn off the quantization there's a little quantizer button so that everything is locked to a musical scale but the sub octave generators are a bit weird they use their 16 harmonic divisions of the vco1 and vco2 so which is to say that you can't quite freely tune them and i think what you found is that you the scale you choose and the melodies you choose there's a kind of w interesting interaction um and it's experimental you have to you don't always get it right and you you do need to play around and find their kind of happy spot um and then there's a filter which is the you know classic moog filter and then you've got decay and attack both for the filter and then for the VCA, which is volume. So um, what you should probably do is like, if you trigger it and kind of get like one oscillator going, can you get it so that you've got VCO one's level turned up, all the other ones turned down and then hit trigger. And you should hear the note. Now try blending in sub one level and listen to the two together. You hear this, and then so what you're going to try and find is like a 
a sort of happy relationship between those two. And what's your uh, favourite, what, sorry mate, what is your favourite uh, one to go to on the quantized value? On what, the scales? Yeah. So I, I quite like that. So there's the, the top two are equally tempered, which is your you know, Bach style keyboard. And then the bottom are just intonation. Uh, and I really don't know what just intonation is, but it's, you know, it's a different tuning standard. I've really messed with the equally tempered and I like 8 ET. That gives you a diatonic equally tempered scale, which is to say less notes and therefore easier to kind of zone in on them, I find. Um, and also I should say with the oscillators, seek oct oscillator switch above it, it's helpful to have it on one octave or two. And that's, that's the, do you see it's the one above quantized? Yeah, I'm on one, yeah. You've got it on one. What that's doing is it's, it's constraining the range that you have with the sequencer dials and the octave, you know, the dials themselves, so that they're in a smaller range. And that means that there's, it, it's just easier to dial in a very specific melody. Um, so hit trigger and see. Um, find something I like. See, yeah, find some tuning that you like with those, certainly with two. What you might find is it's helpful to have VCO1's frequency a bit higher because the sub one and two are going to be divisions of it. So you give yourself more range if you have VCO1 really high. I dig that. Nice. It's very plagal. Yeah, <laughs> it's what? Plagal? I don't know if it's a cadence. It, I know. I know that's not. It just sounds very. Oh man, Gregorian. Gregorian. Oh, Gregorian. Like yeah, like chants and stuff. yeah. I'm I'm all about that. All about that. <laughs> the uh, okay. Gregorian so. techno. Come on. Gregorian techno. <laughs> yeah, that is how things get invented, isn't it? All right, fine. Let's do that. So, I can see that you've got on the polyrhythm. So going back to the sequencer section now, because. We found some tuning. We want to just sort of start getting some riffs going. And so um, you've got the sequencer one light lit underneath rhythm one. Mm -hmm. So if you hit play. And turn up the tempo. But now just to sort of experiment with this turn the rhythm dial all the way to the right and then all the way to the left really slowly so you see what's happening there and what it is is that your tempo is your master tempo and then those are subdivisions from 1 to 16 subdivisions of the master tempo and what you then do is combine them. So turn the light on under rhythm two, and then, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, the seek one, it should be seek one. So you're, but what you're doing is you're sending both rhythm one and rhythm two into one sequencer. Oh. So two rhythms now control one sequencer. So then hit play. And then what you're gonna need to do is like, you'll play around with the rhythm knobs themselves and there'll be times where it sounds like they're fighting each other and there'll be times when it sounds like you can hear that they're working together to advance your to create an interesting gate pattern cool thank you mate i find it's helpful to have them quite low so generally keep them at the sort of anti-clockwise end of the scale yeah, there you go. Hmm. Nice. So you start to see how they like work together and create a little Yeah. A little sort of da 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 A gallop. Sometimes you yeah, a little gallop. It literally, it is a bit like that, um, especially when you've got, like, you can literally have four rhythms clip-clopping along. Um, and so it's up to you how you use the polyrhythms. You might sometimes only want to use one. You might want to use all four. But if you're using all four, you almost certainly want to have them very anti-clockwise. Otherwise, if they're all, if they're just... Each one is just spitting out a mega stream of gates all the time. You're just going to end up with 
a mega stream. You're not going to end up with a, a sort of slower, more considered rhythm. Do you know? Does that good make tip. sense? Yeah, good tip. So, um, so then you should mess with the sequence of dials. You've got step one, two, three, four, and those are how you're going to choose your pitch. Um, and so you can uh, maybe, I mean, depends how you want to do it. What you can do is you can push the trigger button and preview a note and then tune it individually and then hit the next button and then hit trigger again. So you can kind of use that as a way of kind of in not real time checking each note one after the other. Or you can just hit play, let it run and then just play mess with the sequencer in real time. I love that feature that I, I stumbled across that when I did the video before this, uh, where I was trying to kind of use it as without this mm. knowledge. And I thought that was handy. So let's do it. Let's tune, tune something. And then next step. So you hit next and then. Yep. You might, yeah, you might need. Yeah. And then play. find like my, I'm, if I was you I'd be automatically going to the attack and decay and making it go short and plucky like low attack low decay and then adding reverb <laughs> and then that's music is done that's, you're pretty much done and then like cut off low and note you've got VCF EG amount you get the get the cut off to be moved a little bit by the filter one really interesting thing about that is that you, the subharmonicon, it will, I have to get this right, it will only re-trigger the attack stage once it is fully completed, which is very technical. That's not a musical description, but what it means is if you try playing your sequence again and then turn up the attack and turn up the decay, and what you'll find is you will get a lovely smoothed out like ambient thing because if it was re-triggering the, the attack with every single step, you would just get, it wouldn't really make any sound at all. It would get very, very like plucky, but try it. Turn up the attack loads and you're on the attack on the filter and on the envelope and long decay. And even though you've got lots of repeating gate patterns, you'll hear it does make a long sustained smooth passage. And, uh, and then I turn up the EG amount to that as well. So I'm sending that's, it. What that's going to do is it's going to, that will then make the, the VCF attack and VCF decay affect the filter. So they will, and you can do that negatively. Positively. So turn up the attack quite a bit on both. get a kind of smoother sound yeah yeah that, was, that's interesting where I've always wanted uh, where I stumble uh, uh, I stumble on a lot of things I <laughs> I, uh, I really don't understand sometimes uh, uh, attack and decay on the amp I'm cool with right because that makes loads of sense it's like how fast the note comes in how fast it yeah. go, goes away how does where I struggle is with the VCF attack and decay in relation yeah. to like how does that override the amplitude? Because sometimes I'm, uh, and there's these little sweet spots and and yeah, I, yeah, totally I and well. I get these squidgy squidgy stuff. But is there a <laughs> is there a science behind it or not? Yeah. So what? So just in the way that like attack and decay when applied to the the VCA is controlling the volume swell what attack and decay are doing when applied to a filter is they are literally grabbing the filter knob for you and swelling it up and down just as you would if you grabbed cut off and were like you know playing the filter literally you know i play the filter uh, you play the piano like and so um and so this the only science to say is that obviously like um if, for example, you've got an attack that is taking one second and a decay that is taking one second of volume, then if you have a filter attack that is two seconds, 
then the filter hasn't got enough time to actually start attacking by the time the volume is at full and it's turning down again. So you, you want to play with filter attack and decay in relation to the VCA because it's possible you've made your note entirely disappear by the time your filter is starting to affect it. So wow. in a sense, you should use shorter VCF attack and decay times than VCA attack and decay times. That makes and you can try that now. Great. You'll find there'll be a point where you get it right where it, you'll hear the filter go whap. Um and then and a point where you in relation to the uh the EG amount. So that what is doing what it's doing is it, it it is sending the VCF attack and decay to control the filter cutoff knob by positively or negatively, which is to say to the right or to the left by the amount on that knob. So, so you could do it a tiny turn up the knob. So the knob's zero position is in the middle, pointing straight up. And if you turned it a tiny bit to the right, like a little bit to the right, then it would be a little bit affecting the cutoff knob with the VCF attack and decay. Okay. And then what you then have to do is move the cutoff knob to find the sweet spot. So you've got the cutoff knob, the EG amount, and the attack and decay knobs all having a control of the cutoff for you. So it becomes a bit... Like there is a sweet spot and, and it becomes a bit about having a mental mind of I've got this applying to this, I'll adjust. And it, it's, you know, like a recipe, it's like it's just adding a certain amount of salt. Yeah, and, and that, time. that guy, that Mylar guy, he, he finds that it. Guy, he finds it. He knows. He's done this. He's never gone out and spent a lot of time playing with synthesizers. Turn the cutoff knob right down, anti-clockwise, and then turn the EG right up. That one, yeah. Can you really hear it? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I dig that. I dig that. Yeah, yeah. And you're starting to hear how it like. That like the fact that it needs to finish its attack portion, so it almost picks out certain notes in interesting ways. Oh, beautiful! Right, um, so so we've got a sequence cooking. You basically got it going, and you could add more oscillators. You can play with it more, but maybe we should play with the get the D fan working. Yes. Um, so this is the sort of like, how do you hook these three things together? Um, Come on. Now the the way that that is done is because. The, the Mother 32 and actually the Subharmonicon have got MIDI. So there is a MIDI in socket on the Subharmonicon. You, somewhere I've got it, you get like a little adapter for it. The Mother 32 has MIDI, but the DFAM does not. So let's get them, obviously, yeah, let's get them talking. Now, to do this, um, we're going to use analog clock pulses. Um, and so, because uh, basically the Subharmonicon and the Mother 32 do have MIDI, but the DFAM doesn't. So we're going to use analog clock pulses, and that's the traditional way. So let's let's be traditional. Now, um, there's a few different ways that you could do this, but the Mother 32 has got this assignable output where you can set it up to be different things, including just a nice steady clock source to use um, for making for clocking gear to. And so if you go on from the assignable output, which is on the sort of bottom right of the Mother 32, yeah. And we're actually going to patch it back into the Mother 32 into the Molt input. So there's a, where it says Molt underneath there. Yeah. And that is going to let us make two copies of the assignable out um, from Molt out one and Molt out two. And so plug both of those Molt outputs into the DFAM and Subharmonicon's clock inputs. And on the DFAM, it's called ADV clock. That one. Yes, that one. And then on the subharmonicon, it's just called clock. And it's the, not that one, because that's the output. Oh. The, yeah. <laughs> the uh, outputs have got like a little box around them. And then the inputs do not. It, it is a real gotcha. And believe me, I've done that many, many, many times. Thank you, mate. So yeah, then if you are playing on the Mother 32, then that assignable output is outputting a clock. And what you've done with the wires, you're now sending that same clock to clock the subharmonicon D fan, meaning that they should all be in sync. And the Mother 32 is the thing that is actually the master clock of the whole shooting match. 
so, so if I hit play so, on... So what you need to do is hit try hitting play on the D fan and see if it's the big red button. really fast as well. So yeah, exactly. Awesome, so we're hooked up. So you're hooked up, basically. And if you hit play on the subharmonicon, that should also start playing too. So we could try that too. So then it becomes about, oh, is it working? Yeah, nice. And so the tempo knob shouldn't do anything anymore. It's just this one. Yes, that's your master tempo. Obviously, your polyrhythm dials on the subharmonicon still are very relevant. So then, if you want to get a, um, a sort of kick drum pattern going... So, I'll explain on the D-fan. So... The DFAM is so weird, and we, I think we, we've talked about it. I've been there, and we've chatted. Yeah. We've done DFAM. You've done your um, best to try get some information in my head, and it like <laughs> bounces off. <laughs> That's what remote tech support is all about. And so, in short, the DFAM is a percussion synth, but it's, it's like a drum machine, but unlike a drum machine, on a drum machine, you would push like a button, and you would get a kick. On a DFAM, you have to program it to be a kick at a certain step or program it to be a snare at another. And that's what we can do. Um, because the DFAM can make different sounds per step. It's really, really quite, it's really quite a weird way of thinking, but when you get the hang of it, it's it's quite sort of, well, I'd say it's liberating, it's experimental, and, it's, but it, and it sounds wicked. Anyway, so um, what we should do on the DFAM to make your sort of most traditional way of making a kick drum sound is to take envelope and we obviously we just talked about you know the attack and decay envelopes well there are attack and decay envelopes on a dfam and so just in the way that we were talking about you know when you send it in a vca it controls volume when you send an attack and decay to a filter it controls the whip if you send an attack and decay to the pitch then it will create a kind of dive bomb sound it will create like a boom but if you do that to something that is very an oscillator that is very low down and you make that boo very quick then you get a like boom, and it makes like a kick drum sound that is how like the 909 i think that is how the 909 kick drum is derived it's like the most classic way of synthesizing a kick so we should try and do that yeah and it's easy enough to just do it with one oscillator so turn down the mixer settings for noise and vco2 level so that you've only got there are the little like three mini pots in the middle of the the sort of where all the big knobs are, those ones yeah yeah. Um, so you've got oscillator VCO one level is up, and then what you could do is if you've you've got that little grey trigger button, you can use that to just preview, just as you preview on the subharmonicon that lets you preview the note. And is it really high pitched? Yeah, I've got like a, and a bit of, and I've still got a bit of noise. Okay, a bit of noise is sort of. No harm. Probably the noise is from the noise slash VCF mod knob, which is, so if you turn that down, <sighs> what that's doing is that's actually sending noise to control the filter and it makes the filter go fizzy, um, which is a cool sound and actually is used in, I'm pretty sure. Snares? Well, that Mylar Melodies guy has used that because it makes the kick sound fuzzy and warm. Right. Um, and it, yeah, it can for toms and sort of snarey things, but um, so... Turn down VCO1's frequency quite a bit so you get a real low fundamental like I kind of can't hear this. So yeah, that well, that is that's down there. That's that's we're getting into brown note territory. By okay. the way, he's, you're doing incredible because you're just getting the audio in my MacBook. You're getting like the zoom the zoom version of this. Video. Old hawk ears over here, right? Come on. Can't wait to hear the HD version. So turn resonance all the way down because resonance will cause us to lose bass. Cool. And then, and then, so what you should do is make sure the sequence pitch mods are in a zero position. They're set to off. Those are the little switches. And then um, VCO decay, make that quite low. So like, um, and then 
what we're going to do is the, the most important three knobs are VCO decay, VCO1 EG amount, and VCO1 frequency. Okay. And it's the VCO EG amount because it's exactly what we just talked about on the subharmonicon. You are now sending the a VCO a decay envelope, the attack <gasps> portion you can't control. You're sending a decay to control the frequency. So if you're I making it go boo. If I start cranking up the VCO amount, I'll get more boo. The EG amount. And and you kind of want to have it like there, sort of a bit to the right, but not too much. Yeah, that sort of stuff. I'm you getting now. Change the, Change the wave from square to triangle, which will be a more mellow. How's that? I can't even hear that. That's Mate, so that loud. sounds like a kick drum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Taylor, you. come in. Taylor, Taylor. Does that sound like a kick drum? Yes. <laughs> Good. We got it. We got and it. Exactly. And so you can mess with the, try messing with the VCO decay knob. Turn that way up and then play again. Like 808 Tom. But it's a function of making it really like pound is a function of it being quite low. Yeah, nice. I dig that. I dig that. I know you can't hear it, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. That, and then we mentioned that noise VCF mod. Turn that knob up a little bit and listen to the influence. Oh, it's got a bit of a lo-fi... It, it adds a little bit of fuzz to it. It's, it can sound really nice. It helps like pick it out. Um, and also, I mean, there's, there's other things to mess with. But now, so we've got the sound. How do you actually get like a 4-4 four, four kick? You do that by the, that bottom row of knobs. There are two rows of knobs. There's pitch and there's velocity. Velocity is volume. And what we want to do is we want to turn up basically steps one and steps five and turn down all of the others. So... You're literally saying... On the I'm velocities. Make... Yeah, yeah. So you could turn that... Maybe not turn it... I mean, it will be quite loud is the only thing. So maybe turn the synth down. Okay. So turn up those ones up and then turn all the other velocity knobs down. Down. So that you've got... You're making it so that the velocity is only up oh, when you want you the kick to come in. I see what you mean, brother. I see what you mean. Yeah. And then if I hit run on the sequence... And run on the mother, then it should, it should be a kick. A 4-4. Four, four. Okay. <laughs> I'm letting you down, brother. I'm letting you down. But here we go. So let's turn this tempo down here. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, quite so, fast. Yes. <laughs> I want to be a hippie and I want to get stoned on. It's all right. Getting some sort of GABA vibes. What can be really nice as well is using ghost notes. Like, you know, you know ghost notes when you program them on, you know. And you can do that here. If you just have a little bit of velocity and get it just right, you get a kind of little a ghost kick as well. I'm going to stick with just those two because that felt like a... Nice and simple. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. And in that case, then it's... A, you literally are just like hit play on the subharmonicon right. and listen to your kick and your... And what you may find is that the subharmonicon's kind of... Um, the, the pattern is out of phase with the kick, like the, the kicks are coming in at the wrong point. So on the subharmonicon, you've got a reset button. It's just above play. Yeah. And what you might find it helpful is to, while you're listening to the kick play, is bang that reset. When you get it at the right moment, suddenly the sequence will be slotted... Your down point on the subharmonicon will be where you want it, and then you can just go from there. You know, <laughs> so try listen to see how they sound together. I love how mate, you're su such a positive influence. Thank you. I'm gonna. S <laughs> it's like a, no, you, you'll be fine. You'll be fine dropping it you'll on the vert ramp. You'll be fine. Everyone will dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love you. <laughs> right. So that's running. Now here 
what you might need to do is start messing with the rhythm dials. I've broken my modular virginity on screen. <laughs> oh, that should be on a different website. Maybe that's the title of the virgin. Uh, you know, uh, I broke my modular virginity. Eighteen-year-old loses no thirty-four-year-old. But you see, what's happening here is very simple. It's just clocking two things together, and then it's you but know, the, then it's about that's scary for someone that's never done it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was scary. But you're oh, amazing. That made a lot of sense. Good. Well done. What? What? Do, <laughs> so, how do, do you get them in that video that that Mylard dude did? Yeah. Were you using the what were you using the mother for in that spice? So, like the mother, I mean, it, obviously you can use it for lots of different things. There's a couple of useful things, especially. I mean, I, I was using it as a voice, i.e., like playing the mother's keyboard as well, um, which you can do. Uh, but also, um, I did a live stream with Moog, um, like on the Moog channel as well, with the same rig, but a slightly more expanded version. And there's some really amazing stuff you can do. Like, um, I actually had like, the, there's a new firmware for Mother32 where you can control the sequencer's steps on the Mother32 because it has a sequencer built in using voltage and i was actually using a dfam to tell the mother 32 what steps to play and stuff you can so there's these really like complicated things that you can and well not complicated is the wrong word but just really interesting control possibilities i think for what you're doing here it's worth <laughs> just like getting like a, a little baseline going on this and i can show you how to program the mother 32 sequencer because it's quite it helps, trust me, to have someone to like explain it the first time. But once you get the hang of it, it's it's it is very straightforward. It's Let's just it, sort of unique. It has its own like way of working. So to reset the sequencer, um, you need to press, which is worth doing to make sure you're starting from a blank slate, is push shift, reset, and pattern bank. So you go shift, reset, and then pattern bank that one. And that should give you now a one step sequence on the mother 32. So if you hit, turn down the subharmonic on, but it might be worth having the DFAM up to give you just in the background, give you your kick as a reference and hit play. Okay. You might have to hit play on the DFAM and hit play on the mother 32. I think it is. So turn up the mother 32 so you, and you should just hear like a constant da -da 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 on the mother 32. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It can be, I think if you've got sustain, turn that to off so you get sustain off on there. I've got, so a, down. I've, I've got a short da -da 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 -da. Yeah, yeah, nice. Cool. I quite like it like that. Like the attack, just an attack decay without sustain is nice. And then, so the way that the sequencer works, <laughs> I hope I can actually explain this properly. So you go, so if it's playing back, you want to, on the, on the Mother 32, push shift and keyboard, sorry, shift and step. And so if you push, with it playing back, push shift and step. Okay, with it playing back, come on, Jet. Yeah. Shift and step. Yeah. So now you're in step mode, which is how you you sort of it's almost like a 303 ish way of messing with sequences. It's a very sequencery way of playing it. And then you see there's a set end button where it's like there's one two eight nine sixteen, and then there's set end yep. at the top right. So hold step end, and then push button th number three. So what you've done is you've set the end of the sequence to be step three, which is a way of saying you've made a three-step sequence. 
So you should probably hear like three notes. Well, you're hearing still maybe the constant drone. Yeah, that's the one. So you see you've got those three buttons. Is Try pushing them individually and you'll turn them on and off. So maybe push two and three. Yeah. And you'll get... Did it, did it, did it, did it. So and then good. maybe push three and you'll just get... D with a bit of a gap. So you're toggling, what you're doing is you're muting those notes on and off. There's a lot of flashing and colour coding and stuff, and when it's a few notes, it can be a bit hard to see what's happening, but that's what's happening, is you're toggling notes on and off. So if I go set, so, end, and eight, I'll get an eight-step sequence. Exactly, yeah. Um, should I be that brave, or is that foolish? You can be that brave. And so you can toggle some notes, have some on. Sick, yeah. And then to actually like change what those notes are, you need to hold shift and you need to be while you're holding shift is push the the button that corresponds to the note you want to edit and okay whilst it's running happen, or not whilst it's running yeah. yeah you can do it whilst it's not running but i like doing it when it's running and Let's i can hear it. what i'm doing so i'm going to go for this step three that's lit shift yeah. and three shift and step three yeah and now you're you're inside step three now mm -hmm. and the the keyboard which you can see there's a sort of there's a very crude representation of a traditional keyboard there black notes black and white keys notes. white keys yeah and so you are now in that note and you can exactly you got it um and by the way those left and right arrow buttons are up and down the scale so if you want to play a lower note hit down and you'll see the little LED will show you, oh, you've gone down an octave. And then if you push any of the notes on the virtual keyboard there, you'll be accessing a lower or a higher octave for that step. I'm there. I'm there. So I'm in I could get to base town. Right. And then if I... So how do I get out of that? Do I just... So th what you do is you hold shift and then you push that button again. Shift and three. Yeah. Interestingly, you, if you want to skip straight to another note, you can if you hold shift and push another location. You'll jump straight to that location. Okay, so if I go and shift and note. five, and then I... Now you're within the keyboard for five. And then shift and the next note. I'm in, with, in the... Now you're in eight. Yeah. You hear and that, you brother? Actually, there's lots of other stuff. You can do like you can have like ratchets and you can program the length of steps you can have glide i think probably we're not going to go into that but you can do that when you're in that note in that virtual keyboard you can add loads of other data so you can end up with these really funky quite acidy sequences going on with the mother like okay. it's, it's wicked when you really get into it um but for the purposes of this is just having a simple sequence and then the real trick is going to be now what we need to do is you need to get the subharmonic on and the mother playing together in tune with each other um and that may require it might i would say you start with the subharmonic on you start let the subharmonic on be the thing that you work you know begin with mm -hmm. and then make your mother 32 melody second because it's a lot easier to tune the mother 32 to the subharmonic on i find than vice versa but that's i'm you know these are new instruments as well i've not had that much time with it um so that Mylar, that Mylar guy looked like I he knew what he was guy. doing he knew what he was doing but i don't should we try really, it should uh, i just try stack it so yeah you should absolutely but what you might want to do is push shift and step again or shift and eight and come out of step eight and yeah. mute maybe mute some maybe only have one or two one note audible you know this is kind of what that that Mylar guy would do just to just if you're trying to introduce a melody in real time, I'll live, put it on the so one. Can, I'll just put something on the just one. Start on the one, yeah, and then and go into the keyboard for one shift, shift and one, and then octave down, and then maybe just play, turn up the subharmonic on, and just have a little, have a little listen to whether it's um, in tune. And you, what you might need to do is adjust the frequency dial on the mother thirty two because that is controlling the overall pitch of the mother thirty two, and it's quite possible you've got it. Yeah, tuned sharp or flat. So bear, bear, bear with me. I'm going to stack it live. I'm prepared to fail. So this is this is this is running. This is. So run I think this, you need to turn on the subharmonic. Yeah, I shift. I mean, I just want to get out. I'm out of that now. Cool. And I'm just getting my mind together. So th that's running, but I'm going to turn the volume down, and then I'm going to. This is good.
and then maybe get your D fan going so you know it's in phase with the with mother uh, with your sub For something like plucky, perhaps. okay, okay. So, I'm gonna... yeah, just like low, so low attack and low decay on both. Yeah, nice. Oh, we're jamming. We're in time. We're in time. <laughs> <laughs> right, and now, so now, surprised. now I've got, to, now I've got to tune this note yeah. to that, right? So turn up, so turn up the volume. I can't hear that, but so you've got to both tune the, you know, the, the keyboard note and the frequency as well. And when it's right, you'll know. I'm gonna go off piste. Come on, brother. I'm gonna start moving some of these subharmonicon things, yeah? So I would try and, what I would recommend is don't mess too much with the pitch of the oscillators. But what you might wanna try do is introduce the second VCO. Um, like, cause once you've got a tuning relationship on the, on the dials, it's best not to mess with it. And instead mess with the sequencer, you know, the sequencer dials and the polyrhythms. But you could blend in the other oscillator and let's try that. Two free polyrhythm generators to get them going with as well. I'm just digging that really. So if I sequencer two assign, do I just stick with sequencer yeah. one or go? No, no, no. So do, so you've got two. Those two are not doing anything. So you can use them for sequencer two. So put those those other two polyrhythms to sequencer two. And now the first two are doing sequencer one. The second two are doing sequencer two. And then you've got the sequencer two assign button is on. You can just now mess around and find some tuning and polyrhythms and some notes that you like. Right. Okay. What I think it can be really nice is perhaps just use one single polyrhythm on sequencer two and have it fully anti-clockwise so it's as slow as it can be and you can kind of create almost like a four step kind of like riff that plays is a counterpoint to your little like bippy faster riff so it's like you've got two synths. And it might, you might find it easier to only have oscillator one audible just to start with. Let me, so I can turn this down. Mm -hmm. Just keep it running, but turn the volume down. And now I bring this up. Yeah. like Al City. Yeah, I've made like Al City yeah, in a box. Yeah.
And if you, if you need to like get the D-fan back into sync, you can stop and start it. High five. I can't believe that worked out. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. And if you have, I mean, who, uh, God knows who this Milo Melodies guy is, but go check him out. Go. Because, check him and out. I would be hitting him up for this. I would, this has changed my life, man. I actually, that, that's the first fun I've ever had. And, and you might think, well, what was he doing? I'm excited when you, when people bring in these things. But I've never had that experience, man. Yeah, you doing it. That just well, happened. Yeah, yeah. It's, you've got it. And it's, you see, that's the joy. It's like what you've just experienced of like getting some, the, the slight initial pain of getting some things to work. I'm like, why is it doing this? But then when you get it going and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm actually making like a track. Yeah. And it's, and I could just hit record and print the, individual parts and i could chop them up a bit but you pretty much made it you know it's a way of making music it's it's like band jamming but you're using your synths it's great wow and the subharmonicon i get it i get how that was giving me melodies and like sometimes i think well how am i going to program the scale i want it's all working together yeah and uh we haven't shown it here today you, you said to uh, get it it can't you can buy an enclosure for it right yeah, there's like, somewhere here I've got like the, um, you can basically get like a two or a three tier like end cheek kit and that lets you link them together because obviously you've got them flat on the table but you can build them into this little rig. Hang on, I'm trying. Oh yeah, sure. You, you can't see this but basically yeah, okay, yeah. There, is, there is like, and I've, the sort of mad pro tip someone pointed out to me was because I had a two tier and a three tier rack kit they were like, if you take the two-tier kit and you put it upside down, you can clamp it to the top of the three-tier and make a four-tier. So I've got, I've got two DFAMs and a subharmonica and a mother. And um, yeah, it's, so, it makes like this like B52 wow. console. Yeah. It's really good. And um, it's just the... This seems like... Why wouldn't you... If you were buying this, you maybe would get these along maybe get the triple or something or you might and it might be that you've got you buy two of a certain thing or you buy you've got other things like other drum machines because the clock that clock sync that we're using is not common to moog that's that's like everyone uses that now so if you know no matter what you've got yeah you know you can then synchronize and sort of it could be you've got a trad drum machine or something else it could be you've got you know whatever but it's it and that the joy here is yeah it's jamming. And it's like making, if you've got just enough stuff to have like a bass line, a lead line, some drums, and you've got some effects to just kind of pad it out and make it, make it sort of sound magical, then you've, you've got something for, <laughs> something for lockdown, something to just keep you busy. I dig it, man. Thank you so much. I'm at 4% on my battery on this oh my goodness. MacBook. So that was perfect. We made it. And you, sh you it. showed it off so well. Go Thank check. you very much for having me. Mate, thank you so much. Moog, check him out. Look at the care. The beam in a guy to actually just show me the light. And check out the... <laughs> where would you look for other resources? Um, definitely not from us, but where, where's some good Moog stuff? The, what, videos? Yeah. And things. Go on that sweet YouTube and just type in Subharmonicon. Um, and I mean, there's a, obviously the manual for the Subharmonicon is freely available and is really good. Um, and even for the modular curious at the very back has got like a signal flow diagram. So you can, you know, if you want to learn more about how synths work and- And it smells so, a lot from, that real manual smells so good. It really smells lovely. <laughs> it does smell really good. It's got a really like rich sort of mm, mahogany. It does, it does. Mate, thanks so much. I might hit play Thank on you. this and escape the video and you escape to the Yorkshire Dales, hopefully. You're in such a good thanks, spot. Thanks, mate. I look forward to hugging you soon. Take care, Jack. Lots of love. Let's see if this, <laughs> come on. See you guys.
guys. <laughs>